Hello. Today, I want to tell you about glass cold work. In this video I will touch only cold work of glass edges, straightening, trimming, beveling, and polishing. If you take your first steps in glass fusing you feel happy after getting your piece out of the kiln. You do not pay attention to the edges of your work. But eventually you start thinking about better quality of the edges. To make them look professionally you can use diamond hand pads, diamond discs, wet tile saw, lap grinder and wet belt sander. Let's begin with diamond hand pads. This is the most affordable tool. The pads look like colorful foam bricks. One side of them is covered with abrasive, diamonds centered with the base. Each color corresponds to the size of diamonds. Depending on the size of diamonds, the pads can be used for rough works, green and black pads, medium sanding, red and yellow pads, and pre-polishing. Let's look at this edge. As a result of using dams, there are many sharp protrusions. You may not see them, but you can touch them with your hands. To visualize these protrusions simply wipe the edge with a paper towel. Small pieces of paper remain on the protrusions. To eliminate them you can either full fuse the piece again or use a diamond pad. A 200 grit pad is a good choice for this task. Apply water to the abrasive surface and sand the edge for about a minute. You can notice that protrusions either became smaller or disappeared. But be careful. Pads are soft, so when you apply them to the edge, they bend a bit. To avoid rounding of the, the edge, do not apply too much strength. In this table I consolidated the properties of the pads. If you see many dollar signs it means you need to use many pads to achieve a result. Now let's talk about diamond discs. You need cheap 8 to 10 inch discs which cost is comparable with the cost of diamond pads, but they have one big advantage. Unlike pads discs are rigid and this helps in making flat edges. To use discs, you place them to a flat surface which do not allow them to slip and add some water to the abrasive surface. Now let's take this square plate. Its edges were trimmed with a wet tile saw, and as you can see, have protrusions and small chips. Also, the edge is rough and needs to be sanded. The key difference to the pads is the way of using discs. The disc is not moving. Instead, you push the plate to the disc and slide the plate back and forth. This is easier, and you can control the angle between the disc and the plate. It makes possible to bevel the edges, and the bevels will look straight, not rounded. Yes, it takes some time and requires much effort, but the quality of the edge will be much higher than after using diamond pads. In this table you can see that using diamond discs has more advantages over diamond pads, but some operations are still slow and costly. If the edges of your glass item are curved, neither diamond pads nor diamond discs are appropriate for straightening. The best tool for this is a wet tile saw. You need to use a tile saw with a sliding table. You simply arrange the piece of glass on the table and then slide it towards the blade. Some saws can tilt the blade, so you can bevel the edges, but this is optional. Always check that enough water is directed to the blade along the cutting line.
Please never use a wet tile cell without a protective mask. Your health is a priority. To align your glass piece, properly use the raised edge of the sliding table. It's perpendicular to the blade, so you can easily trim the edges at right angle. Make all measurements and place the glass piece in the right position prior to switching the saw on. The resultant quality of the edge depends on the blade. It's always a trade-off between the cut quality and the speed. Faster speeds cause more chipping. Investigate market offerings before buying a blade. Also do not forget to dress the blade periodically to reduce chipping. In this table you can see that a wet tile saw is great for straightening the edges, but is not applicable for polishing of the edges. Usually, you need to sand the edges after trimming them with a saw. Earlier I demonstrated how to use a diamond disc for this and mentioned much effort required for this. But if you add a motor, you get a lap grinder. The larger discs, the longer edges you can grind. This grinder uses 24-inch discs, so it's possible to grind edges 24 long. This lap grinder is expensive, and its cost is comparable with the cost of kills of the same size. But it is worth it. Instead of pumping your muscles while using just a disc, you can concentrate your attention on proper positioning of your piece and setting a right and constant angle while beveling. Beveling is easy, and you can use 150-200 grit discs. Ammo rough discs are very aggressive and it's hard to control the depth of grinding. It's possible to use some templates for keeping an identical angle while beveling, but after getting some experience you can keep the same angle just with the hands. To control the resultant quality of the edge wipe it with a towel to remove water. You can see imperfections only on a dry surface. The edges look better if they are polished. Before polishing you need to grind them using more fine discs. While the initial disc which is used for straightening and beveling is rigid, pre-polishing requires resin discs. They are more gentle than rigid discs with the same grit number. Glass fusers can polish the edges by two methods, by fire polishing and by cold polishing. Fire polishing means that you place your glass object into the kiln and heat it to the temperature enough to polish rough surfaces, but not enough for rounding the corners. If the surface was ground with a 320 grit resin disc, then fire polishing happens at slumping temperatures. So, if you make a plate, you do not need to fully polish the edges. Just grind them with this disc and get shiny edges while slumping. If you do not want to use fire polishing, you need to grind the edges using a finer 600 grit resin disc. Thoroughly control the quality prior polishing and eliminate all scratches. The final stage is polishing. Now you use a felt disc and apply a special polishing serum. The speed of rotation should be significantly lower. As you can see, I do not use water for cooling. Reduced speed helps to control the temperature of the glass edge being polished. The serum is very slippery, so it's a challenge to hold glass in your hands. Control the quality periodically by wiping edges with paper towels. After finishing you need to wash the object and see shiny edges.
What changes if you need to grind a curved edge of a round or elliptical object? Generally speaking, you do almost the same, but instead of grinding each of the sides, you need to grind every point of the edge. It means that you need to control not only the angle between the glass object and the disc but rotate the object constantly to ensure that all points of the edge are ground. This increases the time required for polishing. Beveling is performed the same way, but you also need to control pressure applying to the glass to keep a constant width of bevels. Finally, you get beautiful, beveled edges. If you need to make rounded edges, then it's a big challenge, and a lap grinder is not a right tool for this. I summarized lap grinder characteristics in this table. As you can see, this is a great tool, but it is costly. Large diamond discs are also not cheap. The last tool is much cheaper than a lap grinder but has some advantages. This is a wet belt sander. There are multiple models available in the market, but I use this one produced by Kevington Company. To be productive with this tool you need to add a small water pump. This sander has two replaceable steel plates. One is short and another is long. You install this plate for sanding straight edges. But now I want to show how this tool can be used for sanding rounded edges of elliptical or round objects. After installing and aligning the abrasive belt you get a gap in which the belt is not supported from the back side. So, if you take a glass object and push it towards the belt, this belt will hug the edge. As a result, sanding happens not at one point, but along the curved surface. All sharp angles become softer until the edge becomes rounded. First, let's look from this angle. You can see movements of my hands. Basically, I do the same movements as during using a lap grinder. But now I need to hold the heavy glass plate, and this is painful. If initially you don't feel the weight, eventually the glass object seems heavier. It's a big pressure to the spine. Now let's look at the belt from a different angle. You can see the shape of the belt and how it hugs the edge. It explains why the resultant shape of the edge is curved. It may look simply, but first you need to practice keeping the belt in the right position. When you push the curved glass edge towards the belt, it tries to move to the sides. So, you need to keep balance. Also, if you push too much you can permanently extend the belt's length, and it will loosen and stop driving. I summarized characteristics of the wet belt sander in this table. This tool is more affordable than a lap grinder but you can get the results like the ones you get with a more expensive tool. Finally, if you asked me what tool should be in a glass studio, I would answer, all of them. Each has its pros and cons. But you can make a choice of what tool is more needed for you based on the information provided in this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel to see more videos. Don't forget to like it if you found this useful.